On Broadway, Javier Munoz has told revolutionary stories, making headlines for filling Lin-Manuel Miranda's shoes as Usnavi in In the Heights and as the sexy Hamilton in the Broadway smash. Offstage, Munoz has created his own revolutionary story. He put himself through college, has survived cancer, and is transparent about being HIV positive. Here Munoz discuss his latest role in The New Englanders off-Broadway, why he's not afraid to get scrappy on Twitter, and more on this week's Show People. Javi, thank Hello. you for coming. Well, thank you. Thank I can you for call having you Javi, me. right? Please. Everyone calls you Javi. I prefer it, yeah. Or the sexy Hamilton. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I prefer Javi. I like it when you're on the stage. I just saw you in The New Englanders. Yes. A brand new play at yeah. MTC. Mm -hmm. You're fantastic. You you're oh. so you are so charming on stage. Thank you. Like you just have such a great ability to make audiences like you and just sort of like want you to be well. Oh my gosh. And, Thank and, you so and it's much. A, and it's a great it's a great character. I really enjoy it. It's very sweet moments. You're kind of like um, former flame. Mm -hmm. It's a gay couple yes. that sort of put their roots down in, in New England somewhere. Yes. And you show up to mm -hmm. uh, shake things up. Just a little bit. Right? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he's, he's got his, his this motives. Is Raul. This is Raul. Yes. yes. He's got his motives. He has his reasons. And I think the emotion of, of running back into his first love sort of takes over any and 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 takes the lead ahead any other needs that he may have had. Yeah. Then yeah. it becomes quite sweet. And your goal is to kind of to make people understand how you could break up a relationship. So I think you have that you come with that charm. So <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> And some rosé. And uh, yes, some and cheap rosé. And some but cheap rosé. it's rosé. <laughs> so are you enjoying doing a play? I mean, I you know, know, when people uh, really strongly associate you, especially in the theater world here with musicals, is it is it nice to get the opportunity? Absolutely. It's so incredible to just get into the detail of the text. Yeah. Right? To just have to be in the moment where there's no, there's nothing distracting, right? It's, right. It's, there's no music to pull you or, 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 or to enhance a moment. There's no, you know, spectacle set. It's just the language, mm -hmm. and, and I love that. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I always wonder that because when you're in a big musical, it's just kind of like like a roller coaster. I mean, there's Very so much. much. It's so you have to be at the right place at the right time, and everything is so. And there's an entire orchestra. Absolutely, <laughs> and you've got to be on top, uh, connected to all of it, and on yeah. top of all of it at the same time. And 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 that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, get yeah. me wrong. I, I love it, but doing a play is is pretty thrilling. I do dig it. Awesome, and then <laughs> and it's nice to to save your voice too. Yes, it's so I mean, great. I actually caught a cold last week once the season started to change. It was so great to just not have to worry about, yeah. you know, hitting that note, yeah. you know, in that song. Just yeah. like go in. Oh, have you ever Pretty done good. that? Have you ever hit big notes in big songs? That once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think you have. I've seen you do it. <laughs> I've seen you do it. I follow you on social media. Awesome. And we're going we're gonna to talk about social media. Okay. We're going to get to that. But I want to yes. talk about an Instagram post you put up recently. Yes. Because you you were at the Richard Rogers Theater recently. I was. And you, it was a really sweet message. And, and what it was was you, were, of course, were Hamilton, Alexander yes. Hamilton in yes. Hamilton. Yes. Uh, you were the original standby, mm -hmm. right? And then you took over and played the role for how many times? I guess, oh, Lord. I, I, a I, lot. I, uh, so many. I have no idea how many. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. I a mean, lot. A way, yeah. Years because it, Because even from the public all the way through right. the taking over the role, there were just hundreds. <laughs> right. But what you said is that when, when you were there before at the theater that, every, that you felt so small, yeah. right? And everything felt so big and now it's the opposite. We'll talk about the message of that. It was about sort of conquering, right? It's, and Yeah, and growing. The closest experience I can compare it to is is when you've you've left elementary school or you've graduated high school and you go back to visit those yeah. environments and suddenly the desks really feel so small because mm -hmm. they are and then some, and the hallways feel small and everything feels miniature and you feel so much larger than the space i think that's growth and that's evolution and that's that's yeah. arriving somewhere and I hadn't been back at the Richard Rogers since I left in January of last year. Uh -huh. And I went in to uh, rehearse some music with Kurt, Kurt Crowley. Uh -huh. uh, we were doing an event together. So I got there early and I just got to walk around a little bit and I, I kind of avoided the stage at first. I just, it all happened. Yeah, it was, it was almost it like, happens. I don't know if I can, if I can step out there again. Yeah. And then, you know, I did though. I, I went out and it, it felt like a mini v version of the space we had lived in for so long and and it was a beautiful feeling. It was a beautiful feeling and, and really that's how it felt is when I was in Hamilton, it all felt 
larger than life. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't even know how to describe it. it, it you couldn't contain it all mm. in that building, mm-hmm. really. You know, is how it always felt, every show, every day. And the energy just threw the, the freaking roof. But like this experience, I suddenly felt like the show is that way. Uh-huh. The show is larger than life. Right. The show is ginormous. Yep. But that building suddenly felt like my old elementary school, my old high school. Mm-hmm. It felt small and I felt larger in the space. And that was a really beautiful arrival. And you also said it made you feel like, I fing did that. Well, I mean, every now and then, isn't it not? <laughs> it, 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 we should be able to like sit back and say, you know what? Yep. I did that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, and like that, 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 that moment of, of, congratulating yourself like mm-hmm. yeah man I did that <laughs> yeah. well I think it also comes with like aging I mean you also yeah. are in the heights in the in the same on the same stage yes yes and so you sort of do walk away from experiences but I think when you get older you start to learn to sort of like take things in right absolutely yeah. and that's that's definitely what's happening right now 43 and um, really welcoming finally playing my age Mm-hmm. You know, and not not the college student or mm-hmm. something far younger than myself. In all ways, the, the arriving at this age is 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 wonderful and beautiful, and cause for a lot of reflection. And yeah, that sure. moment was a gift to be able to visit the stage in such a quiet moment because, like, no one's around, right. cast isn't here yet, no one's bustling about. You know, maybe they're getting some costumes ready, but it was really quiet and still, and I could have a sort of private moment. That was a gift, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because it's still running, right? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. still right. I mean, its days are numbered. <laughs> it's there forever. It's there forever. Could you ever see yourself doing it again? No. No. My body would fall apart <laughs> okay. into pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I do miss it, but no way. When you finished it, was it just like, your body, did your body like shut down? Was yeah. it like one of those physical things oh, of Lord. like, you get out of the... Get out of the wheel, the hamster wheel. <laughs> and just flat on the floor. Like, really, it was, it was, my injuries lasted for another three to four months. Wow. After, just before I was really, really back wow. and healed. So, yeah. You know, I've talked to a lot of former alphabas say that they dream about, like, being in Oz. Do you ever dream that you're, like, uh, in Hamilton land? Still, you do? Still there. What are those like? What yeah, are those? They're so surreal. They're <laughs> usually, like, memory dreams, like, okay. of moments that happened, but... You know, something's out of context. You know, someone's someone's there that wasn't actually there, or something like that. Right. But yeah, and and more often than not, no matter what the scene is, I'm in the wool coat because it was so heavy and it was so hot. Yeah, it's like trauma, <laughs> <laughs> like a weighted blanket, yeah, supposed yeah. to make you feel secure. Yeah, but not so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with more Javi Javier Munoz. <laughs> Back with Javier Munoz, <laughs> off Broadway in the New Englander. You are not a New Englander yourself. No, Brooklyn born and raised. Right, right, <laughs> real, right. Real, real New York boy. Yes, yes, this uh, is home, home. Yeah, let's talk about little Javi. Oh gosh. <laughs> let's talk about little Javi. You, you had quite a childhood. I did. Let's face it, you've had quite a life adventure. Yes. Let's just like lay that out. I'm waiting yes. for your book. I mean, like. It, it, it will be coming. And, and I, I, I mean, it's, a lot of writing has already begun. And, and what it's going to look like ultimately, is it, is it one book? Is it several small ones, mm-hmm. or is it going to live as a, as a piece of art, you know? Do I, I actually wondered something? if you could do like a one-man show. Would you ever be interested in doing something like that? I toyed with that idea, yeah. but I feel I, I, I got, at the end of the day, when I keep looking at like the material and the things that I write and I put down on paper, it, it's too much to fit mm. in, in, in a, in a one-man right. show. It's something I think that needs to be bite-sized and, and over mm-hmm. time. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it's also when you when you turn your story into a show, it's almost like you're adding a theatricality to it. It's not yeah. necessarily the most honest way to tell a story. I feel that, and and there's plenty of theatrics. Yeah. In the actual right. life itself, right. <laughs> it doesn't need any more. Okay, so let's go back to the the Linden houses, right? Yeah, Linden uh, Projects, Linden East New York, Projects Brooklyn. in East New York. Yes, that's where you grew up. Yeah. Tell me about it. In the '80s, it, I, I want to say it was the most dangerous neighborhood in uh, in New York. Um, I remember East New York. Yeah, I moved here in 1990, and I remember East New York even then. I remember it was still, yeah. yeah. I mean, the the um, that's what it was. I mean, I grew up 
with my brothers and how many we brothers? Three older brothers, right. and, and we grew up fighting. I mean, that's that's what it was. You know, that was survival, and we were a close knit family to make sure that we protected each other. And 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 uh, by the time I was twelve, we moved out of that neighborhood. Right. But up until twelve, I mean, I didn't know anything other than that kind of aggression and that kind of life. Right. Street street, street smart life, yeah. and like really like able to sort of like defend yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because the walk from the bus to home mm-hmm. was a short walk, but it was a dangerous walk. Wow. <laughs> and what was school like when you were a kid? What were you into? Well, um, I was always... You have like an astrophysics thing. Yes, I do. <laughs> I was just going to go there. Yeah. explain to me what, what, what... Tell me why that's so interesting. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, I was always... I, I loved music. I was always... Uh, music was always part of my life. Um, I was taking piano lessons, although I can't play uh, at all anymore. Right, um, same. But, but yeah, right? It's it like you took all these lessons and, and it's yeah. just, yeah. I can play three blind mice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, music was always present, but I loved science. Science was my thing. Wow. And, and up until high school, my goal was astrophysics. And I went to Edward R. Murrow High School. The structure of Murrow is um, unusual in, in compa- compared to most high schools in, in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have like sort of majors. They're not actual majors, but things you can focus on. And they had a planetarium, and so I could go there for astrophysics, but they also had a theater program. So midway through freshman year, I got the bug to be on stage, and that's it. And then how did, how did you discover the theater <laughs> world there? It's such, a, it's such a funny story. So, okay, freshman year, I was already in the, in the science program, and I was focused on that, and I was, uh, I, was, I was leaving the library to go meet my friends who were in the theater program in uh, Annie Get Your Gun. So they were in rehearsal, they were in tech. So I would go pick them up, wait for them, you know, wait for them to get out of rehearsal. Then we'd all take the bus home because it was safer in groups. Right. I go to the theater and they are in tech and I'm sitting in the back of the house and the director's down front and the lights are off in the house and you know, it's, it's a regular tech rehearsal. It's stop and go, they're doing sun in the morning, moon at night. Mm. And, and that my actual friends are in that number, uh-huh. you know, singing along. And I'm looking at this and I'm just thinking, this is awesome. Like, I should. Why, why am I not doing this? Uh-huh. So the next, the next musical was The King and I. Right. And you could audition, um, even if you that wasn't your focus. So I auditioned. You got to play the king. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense. I'd like to see you play the king. <laughs> oh, That'd be a fun role for you. That, sure. that would be awesome. <laughs> but but, but it, you were not it would have made king. sense if I got an actual role. But like, why I would change my mind about <laughs> right. my focus? But I actually got cast as an Amazon guard. I sure. stood on That's stage important too. like this. Okay. The entire that show. Takes a, that takes a lot of a t- that, yeah. d- d- commitment. But I loved it so much. I didn't. I didn't even say a word. And I was like, this is where I belong. This is what what I need to be doing. So you just knew. I just knew. It, it it made the most sense to everything, to my mind, to my heart, to to the way it just functioned, and and the way that that theater embraces everyone. You know, mm-hmm. I was I was in rooms with the most diversity I've ever been. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd ever I'd ever experienced, and and that made sense to me. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, because you weren't a rich kid, yeah, you couldn't just like sign up for the best theater school, or no. I mean, it was. I mean, isn't it true that you you eventually got into Tisch? I eventually, and yes. NYU Tisch, yeah, and you couldn't afford it. Correct. So that was the journey. Okay, right. It's like so. okay, I can, I, can, I can go here if I can find all this money. Yeah. So um, I went to Brooklyn College, um, and I'm the first in my family to go. To Not go to college at all? At all. Yes. Wow. And and there wasn't. No one discouraged it, but there certainly wasn't any money put aside mm-hmm. to to sure. help me go to school, and and so it was up to me really, mm-hmm. and. I decided on Brooklyn College. It was it was the my favorite of my options here in the City University uh, of New York, you mm-hmm. know, options. After my first year, and I, I really, you know, I knew that theater was what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And my mentors at the time, I, 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 I met two incredible people who became my mentors from my job that I had, who were basically you know, my, my biggest cheerleaders mm. and sat me down to, to discuss like what happens after school and that really, you know, one of the things that gets you into those audition rooms is where you went to school and where you trained. Mm. And so I got sold on, on applying to NYU Tisch and I got accepted and I couldn't afford it. <laughs> so I uh, deferred my acceptance for one mm-hmm. year. 
I worked four jobs that entire year. But a lot of lottery tickets. As, as much. Ninety six thousand. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that would have been ideal. But yeah, like I just saved my money, and when it came to town to applying for loans, my mentor co-signed all my loans so that I could afford that last bit of of money, and I was able to work my way through NYU. I was taking eighteen credits a semester. I was working three to four jobs on top of that, and I was always in a show. I kept that 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 um, planner back when we had you know giant planners, mm -hmm. um, because literally day to day it, I would have to pencil in when I would sleep because there wasn't actual sleep. Mm. It was just like I could e sleep an hour here. I got three hours here at home. Then I got to go, and then I I like figured out places in the Tisch Building where I could like hide and like doze off for a little really? bit and then get up and go to that next, you know, because that, that was it. I was, I, that I was had to work life. my way through. Yeah. Right. And I did. Makes you appreciate so much. The later moments. Absolutely. I mean, the Absolutely. struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's, it's so earned. And, and then when things get a little easier, it's like, this is nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. We're going to talk about when it got a little easier okay. and more when we come back. <laughs> back with Javier Munoz. <laughs> so this guy Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yes. We all know him. He's a genius. I think yes. he's a certified genius. Yes. And a, every award you could think of. A great guy. And yeah. you know you, people associate you with him. Yes. You, you did uh, replace him in In the Heights. And uh, it was, yeah you joined it from the very beginning mm -hmm. right off Broadway. Yeah. It was the um, same journey with both In the Heights right. and Hamilton. All right. the way from the beginning all the way right, right, right. And you played Usnavi, U.S. <laughs> Navy, for, for a long time. Yes. And then, of course, Hamilton. And, and when you were in Hamilton, you did end up like performing, I remember, for the Obamas. You I had a lot sure of great... Did. Wait, you performed for Prince? Is that true? Yes. Did, did you have any moment with Prince? No. Oh, I, did I, you he, know Prince was there? I'm obsessed. I was obsessed with Prince. We knew, we knew he was in the building. We didn't know where he was sitting. Uh -huh. We found out after. Uh, so you but couldn't then see him from the stage. We could in all his princeness. But but I know I royalty. Wish, I wish, <laughs> and we didn't. He didn't come backstage or anything. But but still. But he saw you. He sure did, and he tweeted about it the next day. Oh it really? Awesome. Oh that's amazing. <laughs> and then you very famously, I, I made a joke about it before. You did. You did. Uh, the New York Times did call you the sexy yes, Hamilton. They sure did. And <laughs> and what did Lin Manuel Miranda say when you were suddenly dubbed the sexy Hamilton? I, was there any official reaction? No, there was no official <laughs> reaction. I I. I mean, it, it, it just it just was it's it just, just, it just it was the thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a great amazing thing this that this yeah. man and his talent came into your life and completely I don't know where I'd be without him I yeah. don't I I mean he because before in the Heights you really were just about I quit the business and I know your parents got sick right your yeah. parents both got cancer yes in the same year I tested positive for HIV both my parents tested positive for cancer wow they so they were both diagnosed with cancer so that's when I moved back home and we became a unit of support for each mm -hmm. other through all of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I quit the business because I yeah. wasn't working enough to help financially support them. Right. And and that's when I, you know, became a GM at a restaurant in Hell's Kitchen yep. and and then one thing led to another. Got, you know, there I am in the room auditioning for In the Heights for the role of Lincoln that would be cut. Right. And uh, and that's when I met Lynn and it it's 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 I don't know how to describe it. Like we we both grew up in New York City. We we have similar tastes in music, in in pop culture, in mm -hmm. grew up with so many of the same things that it was like a kindred spirit. And when it came down to uh, the two weeks that we were at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Conference mm -hmm. in Connecticut, and we were developing in the Heights, and that's when they were Lynn was going to sit out and just be composer, mm -hmm. and for the first time they were going to have someone play Usnavi that wasn't Lynn. And it was Kiara's idea to, to have me come in for that. So I came wow. in and I auditioned for it. Wow. That, that, that's where it begins, where wow. Lynn and I are in the room together. And it's, it's, you know, tag you in, tag you out kind of thing. And, and, and help create that character of Usnavi mm -hmm. and that character of Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Help create that, who, what, what it looks like and who, who he is. Right. Yeah, it's, it's unlike anything I've, I've ever experienced in my life. And absolutely, where would I be? without his vision, you know, he's mm -hmm. opened doors, so many doors for us, yeah. for, for, for Latin artists, for, for women, for, for diversity, for, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, 
very, very, very lucky thing that yes. my path crossed yes. with this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And might, I'm grateful for it all the you damn might time. You be at that restaurant because it's well, right, who knows? I, I live right near it, so <laughs> I would see you all the time. But <laughs> yeah. You have not only sort of introduced yourself to the world as a very fantastic talent, Thank but you. you are also an inspiring activist, survivor. Your health journey is incredible. You came out as gay, yes. as HIV positive. Yes. You had cancer during the run of Hamilton. Yes. In fact, you said to, um, I believe it was to GQ magazine, I've died several times already. Yeah. And I think by that you meant, it's almost like the, the, the death of innocence. You're like a, a Broadway superhero. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's, but, but you know, how does it you, how does it feel to sort of have shared all that and to now see how people react to all that with you? Uh, in two thousand two, when I tested positive, I, I I spent three years not knowing a damn thing, not knowing an answer, not knowing what direction to go in, and right. the only thing I, I I could focus on was my treatment and mm -hmm. my conversations with my doctor and my and my wellness. In 2005, I just hit a place where I was like, you know what, I can't hide this. Like I can't on a daily basis have interactions and not have this be part of just, yeah. this is who I am. And yep. this, is, this is what you get. When I walk in a room, that's it. Mm -hmm. This is me. And, and it was terrifying, but it was also like the most liberating, freeing, empowering thing to just say, this is me. Yeah. And, and, and learn you know, it's not something I was strong at at the beginning, but l learn how to be strong in that and how mm -hmm. to stand in that and how to find the place inside that would be content and secure and, and grounded no matter what energy was thrown at me, whether it was, it was acceptance or intolerance. Mm. And through those years, I was blessed with really amazing people in my life. I was blessed with my family and I was blessed with, you know, people like Lynn and, and everybody involved mm -hmm. with Heights and on that whole community and 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 this entire theater community yeah. rallies behind this cause. Yeah. Now I, I look at it and I think, what wasn't there when I was going through this? Mm. What 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 did I need mm. that wasn't there that I can now provide? Mm. And whether it's something that I simply post on social media, whether it's an interview, whether it's a right. campaign, whether it's an organization I support, whether it's just a conversation, what can I keep putting out there mm -hmm. that wasn't there for me that mm -hmm. I needed? Yep. And and that's 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 what it feels like to be on this side. And 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 to watch more and more people have the courage to live openly with their status is yeah. tremendous. Yeah. It's everything, you know? And and to be able to to be able to have the conversations with, with younger artists or any artist who's going through some sort of health issue and feels like they can't pr keep continue pursuing right. their career, it's like, right. it's not easy. It mm -hmm. isn't easy, but you can, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and what's that conversation? And how can I help support that? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what it feels like now is, is how, to give it, how to give it back tenfold because I, I was blessed with a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of really incredibly strong and compassionate people. Mm -hmm. It's very inspiring. Thanks. It is. I, you, you, I want to talk about Twitter. Okay. Because, <laughs> because I have to tell you, I follow you on Twitter. Ooh, it's always an adventure. <laughs> you're, 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 you're such a lovely, warm man. Yes. And sometimes when I see some of the things on Twitter, mm -hmm. it feels like a different person. Yeah, it's like it the feels kid, like a kid from the projects is suddenly on Twitter. <laughs> it's that. It's mm -hmm. the, okay, it's mm -hmm. East New York training. Yes, it so is. So the East New York kid is on Twitter. Absolutely. <laughs> Because it's yeah. it's volatile, it's so aggressive. Yeah, you, and you really sort of let people have it. Yes, because I really believe that like look, there's nothing wrong with um, it's it's wonderful that each artist has their way of interaction and and each person has their way of what I call the rising above, right? Uh -huh. Instead yeah. of going down and meeting right. the person, it's completely respectable and respectful, and that's great. Yeah. That's not my way. Yeah. Uh, I am a fighter, and uh -huh. that's who I am. And when, when, when some, it's, it's really all about how someone comes to me, uh -huh. how someone presents themselves to me. Mm -hmm. And then I pick and choose if I want to engage or not. And sometimes I'll ignore it. And then other times, it's like, no, you know what? Come here. Let's have it out. I didn't say anything. No, not you. Oh, not you. Not you. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, whoever yeah. it is. Uh -huh. because, because honestly, at a certain point, it's how I grew up. It's like at a certain point, you got to stop getting beat up. Uh -huh. You got to stop taking the punches. 
because you're not a, I'm not a punching bag. None of us mm -hmm. are. So if you're going to keep coming at me that way, well, at some point, I'm going to come back. Now what are you going to do? Now you have my attention, and it's negative. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about politics. Oh, it's everything. It's I life. get. I mean, I get dragged for being openly gay. I get dragged for my ethnicity. I get dragged for um, being openly HIV positive. Yeah. I get dragged for my cancer journey. I, I you know, it was the, the most ridiculous thing was a, a, an engagement I had around raising money for Covenant House. And I was getting attacked because I was supposedly helping to support gangsters. And I was like, wow, okay, Twitter, let's all take a time out. But, <laughs> but, but you don't want to get out of the ring. You don't want no. to leave Twitter. You want to stay in the ring and let, yeah. let them know. Yeah, I mean, because it's, it's also, you know, there's, there's, there's a balance to it, right? There's, I don't have to engage in Twitter all the time at all. And, and there are times where I don't. I'll mm -hmm. go plenty of time right. without even bothering. And then right. I'll come back and be like, in your face again. You know, whether it's, it's something given the administration we're living under at this moment and the election and everything that's happened up until this, this time, if you're fortunate enough to not have a target on your back, mm -hmm. that's really lovely right. but, um, and, and good for you. I have multiple mm. targets on my back as a minority, as part of the LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. as someone living openly with HIV. and there's only so much I'm going to witness happening without getting in the fight mm -hmm. and getting in the fight. I don't do it halfway, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to get in there and I'm and like, like don't call me into the room to engage mm -hmm. if you don't want to go there because I'm right. going to. Right. And because I really am, we've come so far mm -hmm. in the LGBTQ community. We've yeah. come so far with HIV and AIDS. We've come so far in all these ways, how dare anyone try and push us back? No. Mm -hmm. And so I will stand up and I will right. be that guy who's going to get in the fight and get scrappy. I'm into it. <laughs> get scrappy. <laughs> take a stand. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't take a stand anymore. You know? And because it's scary. Yeah, it's scary. It's totally terrifying. Right. And, and I get it. You know, and for every person who feels scared, I feel even more of a need yeah. to speak up right. and be right. out there. I'm not starting any Twitter fights with you. <laughs> <laughs> I would never go there. I only want to support you. Uh, <laughs> everyone, go see Javi in the New Englanders. It's playing at Manhattan Theater Club through October 20th, stage two. It's such a great little space. I love, I love it. it. It's like, so intimate. It's yeah. beautiful. Yep. Yeah. He'll bring the charm and the cheap rosé. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.